Orthopedic medicine uh, began back in the early 30s when there was uh, polio, and polio was a, um, a disease that obviously made the spine crooked, made people unable to walk, and so a branch of the general surgeons went off, and these people dealt primarily with polio. The purpose was to straighten people, allow them to walk, to correct a corrective type of skeletal medicine. So we do surgery on the skeleton, bones, muscles, nerves, Everything outside the central core of the body and the head, we pretty much do. Well, we work severe joint pain up by doing two things, basically. The first thing is we find out if the person's function is, is um, destroyed by whatever the process is, wherever the joint is bothering them. In essence, what we do is once we find out they have uh, functional problems, then we attempt to correct those conservatively. We diagnose it with x-rays and then as we diagnose it, the degree of arthritis, we begin treating things uh, with anti-inflammatory medications, with bracings, with physical therapy, sometimes injections. Eventually it gets to some sort of surgical procedure where we begin to replace joints. We have half replacements that replace half a joint, uh, particularly in the knee, or full replacements that replace the entire surface of both the tibia and the femur portions of the knee. Uh, options for arthritis, almost any joint, basically are um, we want to make sure the muscles around the joint are significantly strong enough and prepared enough to take some of the stresses off the joint. So we, a lot of times physical therapy plays a very important role in the uh, management of osteoarthritis in particular. We attempt to try bracing because sometimes you can unload a brace uh, or unload a joint with a brace that takes the pressure off of the joint give them anti-inflammatory medicines, and if people are already taking those, then sometimes what we'll do is the next step is to begin to put anti-inflammatory medicines in the joint that's worn out. At a point when people begin to have pain that is uh, not lasting the length of time we expect for treatments, then we start to think the medicines are not strong enough. We go on to the next step, of course, the injections in the joint. They sometimes last several weeks to several months. So if a person's only getting three or four months out of it, then sometimes what we have to do is begin to start thinking about surgery. At the point at which deformity either is bad enough that it's, uh, the joint is so crooked that straightening it out is the only way and replacing the surface is the only way we're going to get the person out of pain, then we of course have to do that. But pain seems to be the big modulator of how long we go before we begin replacing joints. Well, if, if we simply scope the knee or the joint that has the arthritis and clean it out, that type of surgery, the rehab is very quick. It's a week to two weeks and people are pretty much doing what they used to do. When we start talking about joint replacements, when those take a little longer, the person who's in their 50s and 60s rehabs very quickly. Typically in two to three weeks, they're back doing just about everything. When we get people in their 60s, 70s, 80s, we begin to see a little longer rehab, usually four to six weeks. At six weeks, most people have healed from the joint replacements that we do. Our generation, the generation of joggers and this future generation are people who want to stay active their entire life. The key is if you want to do the activities you really enjoy, no matter what they may be, the key is to be pain free because you're more likely to do that. And that's what joint treating arthritis is all about, is to allow people to be as active as they possibly can until the day they die.